The Star and the Hanged Man, The Hermit and the Magician, and last of all, Inversion of the Wheel of Fortune. I wish I knew tarots better, because I feel like this is probably, like, probably right after the tutorial, stuff I have not seen, this probably predicts it. Um, but I don't know tarots very well. I, I do know what Reverse Wheel of Fortune means, but I don't know where what it means with regard to those other cards. And I don't know about the orders at all. So, uh, it's kind of hard for me to read into that. But a uh, reversed Wheel of Fortune usually means bad luck, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure about that one, at least. <laughs> I think Hermit would usually refer to, like, a stranger. Or possibly a mentor. I'm really not sure about the other ones. Well, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua. Sherazard! This is a rare occasion for the both of you to show up so early. Since it's my last day of training, I figured, why not? She says, after I've talked to literally everyone else in town. Well, not literally everyone else in town, figuratively everyone else in town. I'm ready to get this show on the road and become a bracer myself. I'm gonna work you hard today in every way I can think to make sure that high-spirited attitude of yours holds up. I hope you're ready. I can feel the enthusiasm dropping already. Quite, you! Every time I teach you something, you somehow manage to forget it! Every time! <laughs> this training is my way of trying to keep some of that information in your head, instead of letting it dribble out your ears like it usually does. I feel like you probably deserve it this time, Estelle. Don't worry, Shara. Well, Estelle may hate studying, and rarely ever does her homework, and acts rashly, and is overly naive, and of course has a tendency to stick her nose in everything. Uh, despite all of that, her instincts are pretty sharp, so, you know, I'm sure she'll pick up how to do some of it with practice eventually. Probably. I guess there's not much I can do now except pray for the best. Hold, hold on a sec. I, I get the feeling you weren't standing up for me. That's odd. I'm positive I described all your best traits accurately. <laughs> that is great writing right there. By the way, Shara, what were you trying to predict? Your face was really intense. Oh, this? I was just trying to get a vague reading about what might happen in the near future. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have a have been in the right mindset to interpret the cards correctly. Okay, thanks for joining me. You too. You couldn't read the cards? No, that's surprising to hear. Actually, the more profound the meaning of the cards, the more difficult they become to interpret. That's not important now. I think it's time we start your final training. I'll give you a brief rundown of all the information we've covered up to this point in your training. Convenient for the player who has just joined us. This is the minimal level of knowledge that a bracelet should have in order to function effectively. I'm looking at you, Estelle. Like I said. Ornaments are mechanical devices which operate using what's known as orbital energy. A variety of effects can be produced depending on the structure and type and the type of quartz or process spectrum installed. So, okay. Although it's only been about 50 years since their invention, 
These devices play an integral role in all facets of life, from lights, heaters, and other everyday objects, to weapons and magic and even airships. Of course, airships. In connection, this technological reform is commonly referred to as the Orball Revolution. The bracers are investigative and combat specialists who work to protect civilians and maintain the stability of their respective regions. They aid the community in various ways, such as exterminating monsters, preventing crime, finding lost items, and escorting people and goods. The Bracers Guild, which has established branches across the continent, manages the affairs of the Bracers in each region. <laughs> the Kingdom of, of Liberal, in which we live, sits on the western half of the Zimmerian continent and abounds with nature and deep-rooted traditions. You know, this, this phrase right here is something you see a lot in fiction, but it sounds really out of place to me. To say, of the Zamurian continent, they didn't just call it Zamuria or Zamurian, it's the Zamurian continent. That phrasing feels really, it's really common in fiction, but it feels really weird to me in a real life context. Like, I would never call, say, North America the North American continent. I wouldn't call Europe the European continent. It's just Europe. So it feels weird that it's called that here, and I understand I understand why it's done here this way, and I understand why it's done like this in other places. It's so that you know that Zamuria, Zamurian, it's so you know it refers to a continent. This contains that information in it, but it still feels really weird. <laughs> the things you look at when you are breaking down dialogue. Cho uh, choices. <laughs> like a word word choice, I mean. Anyway, <clears throat> the li Liberal is proud to be one of the leading producers of Spectium on the continent, and is known for its high levels of technology used to develop orbments. Orbment technology has been a key pillar of support for Liberal in protecting its independence as it has contended with its neighboring nations. Ten years ago, when Liberal was invaded by the Erebonian Empire, it was the use of orbital-powered airships that saved the kingdom from defeat, and the Erebonian Empire is to the northwest of us. We are closer to the other one, but we're not that far away from the Empire either. Consequently, even now, our relationship with the Empire is somewhat sensitive, but thanks to the Queen's political finesse, Liberal enjoys peace in our time. Let's see, since we've got a mountain of stuff to do today, I'll lay you off the hook this time with a condensed review. A practical! Since it's practical, it means you will be experiencing things firsthand. That's what practical means, you dummy. Uh, yep. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. That seems. That appears to be what she is saying, Estelle. Despite her appearances, she does actually want you to succeed. <laughs> yes! That's seriously just what the doctor ordered. I didn't know what I was going to do if I had to sit through another day with my... <laughs> I guess I got worried for nothing. Hmm. Indeed. Let's get cracking on your first objective, shall we? Your first objective objective will be to confirm the details of the job you'll be performing. Before that, there's something that we need to give to both of you. I know. Are they ready? Yes, they are. Alright, you two. Go get one for each of yourselves. 
These are very important, so make sure not to lose them. Bracer notebook. I have not looked at this thing at all. Um, so I don't actually know what is in it. Okay, quest objectives, basically. Also, uh, gossip. Ooh. Oh, the game gives me a book to track all the gossip, so I don't need to do it for my- It does it for me! Yes! This is perfect! Uh, no kidding. No matter how insignificant something may seem, always write it down. <laughs> Those reactions. Oh, how strange. Are my ears playing tricks on me? Because I swear I only heard one response. Uh, I, I, I'm sure there were two. Keeping an accurate account of events is important duty to all racers. This means you, Estelle. Look to your right, no, look to your left. There's the door. Go out it. That's, this is the sound of it sliding shut behind you. Uh, I think we just got kicked out, but we're still inside. Don't break me from my fantasy. Uh, I guess this is where we go and accept a job then. Training, robot retrieval. Client Sherazard, 500 Mira, direct request. This training will involve searching the sewers beneath Roland and bringing back the contents of a chest. Neat. It can... Mm, very good. It looks like you were able to see what the posting was. You can read, after all. Already, you, Estelle, you have exceeded my expectations. <laughs> Checking regularly to see whether or not there are any urgent tasks which need immediate attention is also an important duty for the bracers. Being a bracer calls for much more than just someone with a half-hearted attitude. Is that so? Had a change of heart, have you? Okay, that that's just his, right? Like, highs? Uh, but I'm sure it is supposed to be is. I don't know where that H came from. <laughs> well, before all that motivation sneaks off somewhere, let's get to work on your next task. What will we be doing this time? Across the street. Yep. <laughs> Orbal Factory. Here's where you will learn how to use an Orbal Factory services. At the factory, you can modify your Orbal, Orbments, and synthesize support quarks in order to use Orbal Arts! Arts have a wide range of effects and, if mastered, can be extremely helpful. The bracer business is pretty it's a pretty risky occupation, so the guild has had a long standing relationship with these factories. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it All men's are mechanical devices which exhibit an array of effects through the installation of various types of quartz. By definition, this means that lights, airships, and so on are all types of orbits. However, the ones we will be discussing today are battle orbits, which are sp uh, which enhance the user's physical abilities and make it possible to use magic. Since each orbit is adjusted to match the owner's personal aptitude, the structures for these devices also differ for each owner. In other words, each person ha can a has different orbit stuff. Put simply, the shape of the fixed elemental slots and lines which connect them vary. Okay, so each so each orbit is like a 
like a... Like, it's like the sphere grid, only much smaller, and each person has a unique one, and also, the things you can slot into it are different for each one. <laughs> Mm hmm By default, the central slot is open, but the other slots must be opened at an horrible factory like this. It'll take a fair amount of serif, too. EP, which is needed for magic, will also see a max increase according to the number of open slots. I recommend opening them all as soon as possible. Simply put, Orbal Arts are magic which can be discharged exclusively through the use of battle ornaments. In other words, a number of peculiar effects can be produced by using the orbital energy stored within each of these mechanical devices. Since Orbal Arts can be a mouthful, they are almost universally referred to simply as arts. Probably ought to have been called that from the get-go if you ask me. There are several types of arts. But in order to be able to use them, their corresponding quartz must first be synthesized at an orbital factory. Orbments are also set up so that once a particular quartz is installed into a slot, the owner will be able to use those arts. The type of arts one can use also changes depending on the elemental value and the combination of installed quartz. Basically, if you want to use water arts, all you have to do is install a quartz with a water element. In reality, they these are much more complex devices than what I have described, but uh, this is a basic layman's understanding. Quartz are circuits made from serif. Quartz have a vast number of effects and raise their own visibility while simultaneously making it possible for them to use arts. However, you will not be able to harness any of the effects until the quartz has been- yeah. Okay, I'm getting tired of that voice. <laughs> Fixed slots which only accept certain types. This being the case, when you synthesize a new quartz, be sure to check which ornament. Serif are fragments of septium which are dropped by monsters. They're divided into seven types, uh, Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, Time, Space, and Mirage. Mirage, really? Mirage. What the heck is Mirage? I can use them in for money, or I can use them to make quartz and to open up ornaments. Estelle can use any element, of course, but Joshua has to be timed. We won't let you screw yourself by spending all of your shit on money when you should be making stuff. All quartz is okay on all of them. Hmm, interesting. Time quartz only. Time quartz only. Hmm. Well, I have to make time. I'll do that one. And I may as well do these as well. I'll just do one of each, since I was given all the stuff for that. Increase the arts you can use. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is the uh, this is the notebook, right? Achievements. Ooh, wow. Okay, actually, this is a lot of detail. <laughs> uh, I feel a little taken aback. 
This is more detailed than I was expecting. Wow. But it is lives it all up right out there for me. D no, it doesn't it? <sighs> That's amazing. One for six. gossip in there, though, is there? That... yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. I should... I guess I should actually, like, equip it. Throw that one in there. It seems like a good call. And time only. <sighs> if you balance arts between each other, like you've done here, it should make dealing with monsters much easier. Uh, that it does. In far more detail than I ever expected. <laughs> yep. Okay, I will. Open this one or this one. Uh, hmm. It does seem to be actually grouped over here, and I, as far as I know, like they're all the same for Estelle. So that is much more expensive to open. So, like, the first time I did this, notice that I cannot select this anymore. The first time I did this, I made exactly two uh, quartz, and I did not have something to put in this slot. So, uh, you know, that was fun. Stone hammer, or firebolt, or airstrike. These are my options. Uh, I like the idea of increasing my agility. I don't know if this is useful, but I like the idea. I also don't like the idea of decreasing my defense, so... Yep. This concludes your training here. The other thing is, I'm not sure- I'm not completely sure I'll actually be keeping Joshua with me, but Estelle is on- is literally on the- like, she's on the splash page, not only for this game, but also the two sequels. She's definitely prominent in the whole trilogy, so I feel safe buying stuff for her, is what I'm saying. Whereas for all I know, Joshua's gonna run off as soon as the tutorial is over. Okay. Now that you mention it, I vaguely remember some um, sort of talk along those lines at the breakfast table. Sometimes I fear for the future of the Bracer Guild and humanity. Oh well. Let's head over to the testing area. Thank you for all your help. I'm going to remember you le left me high and dry like this, Joshua! All your training has finally come down to this. Your qualification test will begin here. I expect to see you both use what you've learned up to this point. Understood. What's wrong, Estelle? Uh, 
Shara? I was kind of wondering, but uh, is there not going to be a paper test or something? Did Cassis drop you on your head as a child or something? You just read what it said on the bulletin board not 15 minutes ago. And it even made you write down what you've read on, in your braces notebook. Unless you forgot that, too. I'm pretty sure the job listing mentions something something searching for and retrieving item from sewers. Ring any bells? Oh, Estelle. I give thanks to thee for thy infinite grace in bestowing upon us such wonderful gifts as sewers, which are far preferable to a desk and paper and pencil. Or pen. Did probably a pen. Ah. <sighs> Indeed. <laughs> Just so you know, though, if you do happen to flunk the test, you don't even want to imagine the kind of homework I have in store for the both of you! Well, if you're so confident, then how about you prove that you're not just blowing hot air? Anyway, as you both saw on the bulletin board, this test will be a search conducted by in the sewers. Retrieve a chest which has been placed somewhere within the area. The layout of the sewers is extremely simple. Well, excuse me. But you don't need to worry so you don't need to worry about getting lost either. However, there are real living breathing monsters down there, so if you Get careless and let your guard down. You will be sorry. Also, uh, take this. Whew. Indeed. Alrighty then, let's get pumped and knock out this test! Don't forget, though, this is an exam. We should make sure we treat it as such. 